If you got a copy of the Bible, kindly turn with us to James chapter 3, and we shall read from verse 3. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation the works with meekness of wisdom. So one who is wise among us, if you know that you are wise, show that out with good behavior, with good works, and both with meekness of wisdom. And verse 14, But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. You think that you are wise, but you have got a nature to have a bitter jealousy, zeal, about the truth, about your lifestyle, about who you are, about the ego. You have got a bitter jealousy. And because of that bitter jealousy, there's a contention, argument, strife. Don't glory us, don't boast that you are a very wise person. It's a lie, you are not wise. You are not wise. Don't boast. That wisdom is not from above. That wisdom is from the bottom, from the hell. That wisdom is sensual, just about your senses. That wisdom is devilish. Don't brag about that wisdom. That wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, are from bottom, sensual and devilish. We go to verse 16. For where envying and strife, where there is bitter zeal, and because of the bitter zeal, contention, argument, strife, for where a envying or bitter zeal and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. When there is a bitter zeal, and because of that bitter zeal, you have got arguments, there will be confusion. I am right. No, I am right. Both are arguing. What would be the end of it? There will be confusion. And there will be confusion and every evil work. Just imagine a family situation. The husband thinks he is very wise, endued with knowledge. She thinks that she is very wise, she is endued with knowledge. That's where the argument comes. If he thinks she is right, there will be no argument. If she thinks he is right, there will be no argument. He thinks he is wise and he is endued with knowledge. She thinks she is right and she is endued with knowledge. That is why there is a content, there is a contention, there is an argument. Otherwise there will be no argument. What is the reason for that argument? Because you think that you are right and he or she thinks that he or she is right. That's why we argue. Otherwise there can be absolutely no argument. How could we argue when you say something and the other person says, yes, you are right? There will be no argument. So when that argument is escalated, he says, shut up. Probably, out of respect, culture, wife may not say, shut up. She may say, be quiet. Both mean one and the same. You are saying, shut up. She is saying, be quiet. Both mean one and the same. It is not one is better than the other. There will be confusion, then hitting, spitting, spoons flying. All evil work will follow. So where there is this contention, where there is this argument, that ego, or I am right, you are wrong attitude, that I know everything, that attitude, there will be confusion, and that confusion will beget evil work. The mother is saying something, the son says, no, mommy, you don't know, I know. No, son, it's not good. Ah, mommy, be quiet, you don't know. 
Finally, what will happen? Probably he will go away from the house. And that will be heartbreaking for the mother. There will be bitterness, weeping, gnashing of the teeth, or running away from the family, or committing suicide. All those things would follow is all because somebody thinks he is right and the other person thinks they are right. So there will be confusion and all sorts of evil work. For where envying and strife is there is confusion and every evil work. Now you are going to see the characteristics of wisdom from above. But the wisdom that is from above, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Is first pure. Then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. There are seven characters given in this passage for the wisdom that is from above. For the wisdom that is from above. Number one, it is pure. Here it is not said number two, number three, number four. All the rest, number two. The best is pure. All the rest would follow. But to our study we are making it point one, point two, point three. But very clearly it is the best. All are equal. All are essential. But the best among them is purity. It is purity. So wisdom from above that talks about pure. So when Paul was writing to Timothy, Paul says, keep yourself pure. Keep yourself pure. You have to keep yourself pure. It is external purity is very, very essential. Keep your dress pure, clean. Keep your house pure. Keep your vehicle pure. It talks about cleanliness, clean. Generally we say cleanliness is next to godliness. Next to godliness is cleanliness. Even in the ranks of the devil, we say evil spirit, we say unclean spirit. Generally the people with the unclean spirit, they keep themselves unclean. They keep their house unclean. They keep their dress unclean. They don't want to be clean. We call that spirit itself unclean spirit. They don't even just imagine you've got a spirit of depression. Don't be scared, but I tell you the truth. You've got a spirit of depression. He may not like to have a good bath. Maybe just he'll go have a bath and come. He may not love to dress well. Even brushing the teeth would be a burden. You may not put a makeup. When there is a spirit of depression, you cannot enjoy to be clean. When there is a jubilant spirit, you love to wear a clean dress, you love to have a bath as a stress buster, you enjoy. When there is a spirit of depression, you cannot be clean. That's a small symptom. Somebody has to force you for that. When there is a festival, birthday, a celebration, you keep your house, everything clean. The same attention you may not be given to your house in the other days. It all depends on your spirit. So this cleanliness, purity, it is all based on the spirit. It is not only that, say for example, gents, shaving, taking their shaves, facial shaves. When they got a spirit of depression, they may not have the joy to have a clean shave and all. It's all a spirit problem. It's all a spirit problem. A depression. Life is not enjoyable. They don't have a purpose for living. When they go for a job, when they go for an interview, they want to look very smart. So it's all, it's all your spirit. So keep yourself pure, keep your atmosphere pure, etc., etc. Apart from that, this word also means, and more powerfully means, 
means candidness, straightforward. Yes is yes, no is no. When you say it should not sound no, when you say no, it should not sound yes. Very straight. When you say brother, you mean brother. When you say sister, you mean sister. When you say sister and you mean something else, that's devilish. That wisdom is devilish. That wisdom is sensual. Now you can easily understand. What is that purity? You're talking to somebody and saying, sister, sister, sister. And very wisely. Oh, only sister. But there is something else is in your heart. You behave very wisely. That wisdom is demonic. That wisdom is from the bottom, from the hell. That wisdom is sensual. That wisdom is not from above. Now you can clearly understand. Wisdom from above is pure, candid. Yes means yes, no means no. Yes doesn't mean no, no doesn't mean yes. Sister doesn't mean love, love doesn't mean sister. Can you see that it's very easy to understand now? Whether you are devilish, demonic, or you have got a wisdom from above. Wisdom from above cannot lie. That will be pure in thoughts, pure in words, pure in deeds. It's very candid, very straightforward. Now this is a small touchstone to know whether you are wise or not. If you are not wise, don't brag about your wisdom. Don't brag about that, oh you never, mommy you don't know, daddy you don't know, pastor you don't know, he doesn't know, she doesn't know, you don't know actually. And the wisdom, what do you think? You are very wise to talk in an ambiguous way in a very ambiguous way, very subtle way, that wisdom is devilish. You think you are very wise. You, are, you escape very wisely, you talk very wisely. Yes, you do talk very wisely and that wisdom is devilish, that wisdom is sensual, that wisdom is from hell, that wisdom is not from God. If you have got a wisdom from God, you talk straight. You look straight. You smile straight. In everything you'll have a straight behavior. You'll have a straight behavior. You're very pure. Very simple. And you show that with good works. You show that with good behavior. With meekness. Your smile would be pure. Your smile would communicate what's that in your heart. If your smile is contrary to what's in your heart, you are devilish. You are demonic, you think very wise, you are able to hide everything. But that wisdom is from the devil. I don't say you are devil, but the wisdom that you have got is from the devil. Devil incarnate, the devil in the form of a flesh. Devil in the form of... Don't be hurt. But I tell you the truth. If you are hurt also, I am happy. I am hurting only the devils. I am not hurting saints. Only those who are putting up that deception, I am hurting them. This hurt, if that can change them to be children of God, I would be happy. That's why I'm ministering. That's why I'm ministering. I don't want to hurt. If this hurts you, I'm happy. Because you've got a devilish wisdom, that's why you're hurt. And if this hurt changes you, I'd be happy. Because it's totally devilish. The wisdom from above is pure. That's candid. One of the meanings is candid. Straight. With no deception. With no double meaning. Yes is yes, no is no. Anything more than that Jesus said it's from the devil. Be simple. Meekness. Show that with meekness. When you are candid, don't be arrogant. Don't be arrogant. Be candid with meekness, with gentleness. That is the wisdom from above. The second characteristic of the wisdom from above, though I, as I said, not second, third, fourth, all are equally important. The first one is purity or candidness. 
then probably to number I can call it peaceable. It's not peace, peaceable. A wisdom, we need wisdom not to bring con contention, not to bring an argument, not to bring a confusion. We need wisdom to bring peace. Peacemakers. We should become the cause of the peace. We should not become the cause of the trouble. We should not become the cause of the confusion. Somehow we should become the cause of the peace. Jesus is the cause of our peace. By the blood he shed on the cross, he made peace. So even we must accept the chastisement of peace, the punishment for peace. Or we, must be able to, we must be able to pay the price for peace. There must be peace. The peace is not the absence of war, a well-being, shallow, a contentment, not content, a contentment, a satisfied life. So somebody must be willing to pay the price for peace, peaceable, peaceable. I'm willing to pay the price. I'm willing to accept the punishment. Somewhere there must be peace, maybe in the family, in the church, or mostly in the family situation. So if you have knowledge, if that can bring quarrel, that can bring, can, you may be right, you think you are right, that's why you are arguing. But if that brings confusion, you must become a, you must become a sacrifice to bring peace. What's that you can do to bring peace? How can you become the cause for peace? Just imagine for a minute. Oh, I am right. My mother-in-law is always wrong. My daughter-in-law, she is always wrong. My husband is wrong. My boss is wrong. My pastor is wrong. Everybody is wrong. I am always right. You may be right. But what's that you can do in that situation? How can you endure the wrong? How can you make peace in that situation? That is wisdom. Even if there is a need to shed blood, if there is a need to accept some chastisement, I want to work out peace. Because of me, peace must be in my family. Because of me, peace must be in my... That may be very challenging, but that's the wisdom from above. If you can work out for peace. He says two words, I say four words, he says eight words, and I say sixteen words. Only I prove that I am right. I want to argue in every possible way to prove that I am right and he is wrong. There can be no peace. There will be only confusion and strife. There will be every evil work. So who can put the, who can bring the peace? Husband or wife, or parents or children, who can bring peace? One who wants to have more the character of Jesus. One who wants to have more the character of Jesus, he or she will become the cause for peace. I always remember this in many places I have given this illustration. One young couple, they came to me many years back and that wife was little weeping or Sad, saying she cannot adjust with her mother-in-law. The husband was a very good man. He said, yes, yes, it's very difficult. Even my sisters cannot adjust with my mother. He's a very understanding husband. Very lovingly they came to me. I said, what, that's the, that morning or sometime back we were singing a Tamil song, Yesu Thangi Na Dun Bangal Enai Thandi That one song we were singing that day. So I asked her, did your mother-in-law slap you? No. Did your mother-in-law spit on your face? No, Pastor. Did she pull you by the hair? No, no, not, Pastor. She did, did she remove your dress in the, mid, in, the, uh, in the midst of others? No, no, not all those things. Why, this morning only you sang that song, Yesu thangi na dunbangal ene thandiye She didn't hit you. She didn't pull you by hair. She didn't spit on your face. She didn't remove your uh, dress. What did your mother-in-law do that you cannot bear it? 
as a yug. Go. No problem, otherwise, what, how can we have the nature of Jesus? Go. I just, they're very loving people to me. I said, yes. I may not tell you the story verbatim, but it's what exactly happened. After some years, oh, the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law jived so much that she's always started going, Mami, 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 Ammi and all gone. Earlier it was Ammi. Afterwards it became Mami. Mami, 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 Mami. My dear brother, my dear sister. This also don't try to find out who that couple was. I don't want to say. But I mean it. We may have to endure, not with all biting the teeth and all. A little bit of joy, a little bit of jubilation. This is what the Lord has given us, the Lord. When you are willing to endure, the pain would be less. When they compel you to go one mile, in your mindset, be ready to go for two miles. In your mindset, you are willing to go for two miles, then this one mile may not seem to be difficult. This one mile will not seem to be difficult, because already your mindset to go for two miles. Blessed are you. You are the blessed person. If your mother wants you to sweep the floor, you are willing even to wash the clothes, sweeping the floor will not be difficult at all. It will not be, because your mind said you are willing to do. You are willing to do. Oh, why are you always asking me? We are not asking her. You are not asking my sister at all. Only I have to do, only my mother is asking me. So the difficulty is not sweeping the floor, the difficulty is not asking the sister, only asking me. You ask the sister also, then that won't be difficult. Please think, it's all our mindset. So what's that I can do to bring peace? If you know how to bring peace, and by even accepting some difficulty on your side, the chastisement, some pains, you enjoy that pain. Even childbearing is painful, you enjoy that pain. You have to do a little bit of work, enjoy that pain. You enjoy that pain. My dear brother, my dear sister, that's the wisdom from above. It is peaceable. Always thinking how we can bring peace. And number three, wisdom from above is number one, pure, number two, peaceable, number three, gentle. If you have got wisdom from above, your behavior would become gentle, a very gentle behavior. What do I mean by gentle? What does the Bible mean by gentle? The definition for that word gentle is law abiding. Law abiding, but not law enforcing. Law abiding, but not law enforcing and helping others to abide the law. Three things. A gentleman, he will abide by law. If it is eight o'clock, he allowed to be there by 7.55. He doesn't want to be late. He's a gentleman. Some of you might have come late, but you've got a desire to come in time. That itself is gentle behavior. Anything. A gentleman, when there is a signal, he never skips the signal. He loves to obey the signal. In the office, if they got a uniform, he loves to wear that uniform. They say you must have a tie on, you'll have a tie on. They say you must have an ID card, you'll have an ID card. In the school, the teacher says, come like this, she'll go like that. It's a gentle behavior. Gentleness is seen only law abiding. Law abiding, whatever the law may be, even wisdom we saw. Wisdom abides by the law. Gentleness is abiding the law. Abiding the law, or any principle. But not enforcing the law. 
What do you mean by enforcing the law? He wants to be in time. The wife is not getting ready. The children are not read, getting ready. Immediately hitting them, chastising them, shouting at them, creating an argument, a confusion, because of his zeal to be right, that should not be a bitter zeal. That should not cause confusion and evil work. Then the son says, you go, I come later. And he doesn't come at all. And every time sitting there, whether he's coming, he's coming. And the reason to be punctual, he'll say, the pastor the blame will also be on the pastor. I want to be in time because pastor will shout. Not that I want to be in time. I want to be in time, the pastor will So that can be a gentle behavior. They will not force that law on others. They will not create a confusion because of that. That gentle behavior. So they are law abiding, not enforcing law, nevertheless help others abide law. So to go in time, they want to go in time, that's the nature of a gentleness. The same time they don't force it on others, the same time they help others also obey the law. Probably help wife to get ready fast. Maybe to switch off the lights, switch off the fan, uh, getting things organized. Somewhere, somehow she can help, uh, he can help. Help the children, the mother. She wants to be very punctual. She helps the children, she helps the husband. So a gentle behavior has got three parts. He or she is law-abiding. Number two, he or she doesn't enforce law. Doesn't mean they wink at the law. Number three, very important, help others abide the law. Help others abide the law. I give a beautiful example from the Bible. What is a gentle behavior? Jesus Christ we never committed adultery. The Bible says commit not adultery. Jesus never committed adultery. So he abided by the law. A woman was caught in adultery. The law says you should stone her to death. But she was not, he was not inflicting that punishment on her. He is merciful. Number three doesn't mean he allowed that adultery. He tells her, sin no more. He gives her forgiveness. He gives her a new leaf of life to live without sin. All three things you can see in his behavior. He was not committing adultery, but he was not punishing a person who committed adultery, but he, he, does, he never condoned that. He never condoned that. He said, okay, okay, nothing wrong in it, okay, it's already tried. He said, sin no more. Sin no more. So these three things should play a part. If you can play these three things together, you are a wise person. If there is a wisdom from above, you will have this gentle behavior. You would be able to help others to be law obedient. In the house that builds wisdom, I always give an illustration. Uh, don't be offended. In that illustration, a very small illustration, in that illustration I always say this. Uh, father, very punctual, he wants to be very meticulous in his timings. Morning getting ready, uh, getting the children ready for the school. Oh, it should not be late. I don't want to go late. I don't want you to go and stand outside the gate. No, he shouts, ready, quick, quick, quick. The way he was shouting, the mother just uh, got the breakfast ready and everything in the tiffin box. She placed the tiffin box in the box and in the bag and all, but kept no tiffin in it. In the hurry she forgot that. And by the time the boy says, uh, Daddy, uh, my math's not good yet. Up, come on, come on. I tell you how many times keep everything in its proper place. That's the time the mother says, I don't know where to keep the knife, where I kept the knife. Anybody saw my bike key? Anybody saw my bike key? I don't know where I kept my bike key. 
He is not a gentleman. He loves to be punctual, etc. He punishes the child, not he was keeping things in proper places, and he was unable to lead others. He was unable to lead others. So a gentle behavior will be, uh, first it's candid, number two it is peacemaking, number three it was gentle, number four it is easy to be entreated, easily adjusts, easily goes well with others. Suppose he wants to go for a, a hospital visitation to GH. Somebody says, we'll go to ESA. Okay, I'll come. GH or ESA? Okay, I'll come. No, if it is GH, I'll come. If it is ESA, I won't come. I said GH first. No, oh, it is. Okay. I said GH. No, they all want to go to ESA. Okay, we'll go to ESA. Very easy to adjust. Easy to be entreated. Some people, they'll be very arrogant. Don't, they don't adjust with others. Even the whole family, they don't adjust. In a very loving way, okay, you want to take this, just take. You want to take that, just take. As long as it's a decent one, it's okay. As long as that fits my budget, okay. I got some criteria, it should be a decent one. It should fit within my budget, okay, you take. For me, the problem is not between blue and green. Want to have green, it's okay. Want to have blue, it's okay. But it should not be transparent. It should be decent. It should be within my budget. Within that framework, very easy to be adjusted with others. If you know, if you can adjust with others in a very easy way, not compromising, not compromising on principles, easy to be entreated. We can easily tell them what's in our mind. In the right way, we can convince them. Okay, that's right, I'll accept. There's no ego. The ego is the reason for all uh, argument, contentment, etc. There's no ego. Okay, want to buy this? Buy it. Want to buy that? Buy it. No problem. See, in a very jocular way, I say, somebody comes and tells me, the rabbit that I got has got only three legs. I will not, by nature, I tell you, I will not fight. No, no, rabbit will have four legs. He said, no, no, the rabbit I got, got only three legs. No, idiot, don't talk like that nonsense, stupid. Rabbit has got four legs, why are you saying like that? The problem is, the rabbit he got, avam puticha mailuku moonu kaalu. Oru kaalu evana paaya puticha saapta, ayak namakin nanchi. Ayak puticha sanna poduma. Avam puticha mailuku moonu kaalu, naam paatha mailuku naalu kaalu. Idhu kore chandaya. Just easy to be entreated. Okay, ne put your mail ko moon kalu pa, but all mail ko naal kalu. Put ne bache. Ne put your mail ko moon kalu. Na adi apni na utuk mein mail ko naal kalu na. That's not a wisdom from above. Wisdom from above is easy to be entreated. To save time, let me go fast, and it's easy to be entreated. And the next one, full of mercy and good fruits. God willing, I'll explain these things. Here it is merciful, the literal meaning is empathy. Wife understands husband's problem. Here okay, what all problem he has got in the office, in the work situation. And husbands understand what all the problems she faces in the house, with the children, with the mother-in-law, what her weakness. Husband understands wife, wife understands husbands, or parents understand children, children understand parents. So that's a, we see their problems through their eyes, that's empathy. Sympathy is different. Empathy is seeing others' problems through their eyes, keeping them in that situation. All the same thing goes, I am right, no, that, not that attitude. Why is he behaving like this? Why he does like this? If I were in his place, trying to understand others, that is merciful. Yet this mercy is not uh, showing paisa, giving paisa to beggar. No, not that mercy. The literal meaning is empathy. You are very compassionate because you are able to see others through their eyes. They always say, 
A manager must have two qualities. One quality he must see, he must understand others' problem. Another quality he should not understand others' problem. Only when you understand others' problem, you may be able to help them. When you go on understanding their problem, you cannot be able to, you may not be able to help them. So you must have both the characteristics. Here this merciful is trying to see their problems through their eyes. And full of mercy and good fruits. When you understand their problem through their eyes, it's one point. And helping them in their weakness. Helping them in their weakness, that is wisdom from above. You understand the problem of your wife, the children, or somebody in your work situation, and you help them in their problem, that is, you're full of mercy and good fruits. Full of mercy and good fruits. You should be full of mercy. That's again the same uh, thing about the ego. Okay, I'm right. No, no, it's okay, it's some problem. We'll try to understand them. We try to help them. We see their problem through their eyes. So it is full of mercy and good fruits. And six, without partiality. That's a wisdom from above. I'm not partial. Very careful, I want you to be. Without partial doesn't mean treating everybody alike. It's not treating everybody alike. Give them, give them, to give them what they need. Now listen carefully, it's a very simple example. One child is suffering from severe cold and cough. And another child you have taken for a tooth extraction. To stop the bleeding, the doctor said, give the child some ice cream. So if you give ice cream to this child, the other child suffering from cough, uh, cold, that child will cry. If you don't give ice cream, the bleeding may not stop. You want to be partial. Whether you don't give ice cream to both the children, or you give ice cream to both the children, how can you be without partial? You give the child who has got the tooth extracted the ice cream, what that child needs. Give the other child a hot coffee, what that child needs. You are a mother without partiality. Oh, I want to be impartial, so I give ice cream to no one. I want to be impartial, so I give ice cream to both of them. That's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. That's not impartial. An impartial mother will give the ice cream to the child, the child that requires ice cream, gives a hot milk to the child that requires a hot milk. That's a wise mother. So the without partiality means giving everybody what they require. That's a wisdom from above. And wisdom from above, the seventh one, is without hypocrisy. That's the wisdom is pure. He starts with purity and ends with hypocrisy. Without hypocrisy. Who is a hypocrite? When your face and your heart doesn't concur, don't concur. Your face and your heart don't concur, you're a hypocrite. Woe unto the hypocrite, Jesus said. You keep something in your heart and you put a deception outside, a pretension outside, you are a hypocrite. Woe unto you, whosoever it may be. Whosoever it may be. The wisdom from above will be with no hypocrisy. You may even be hypercritic, but you cannot be hypocritic. You may even be hypercritic, you may criticize others. I don't say that's right. But you may call a spade a spade. Oh, we must talk wisely, yes? That's the wisdom from the devil. That's a wisdom from the bottom, the hell. You are talking very wisely. You are talking very cleverly. Nobody can understand. God can understand that you are a hypocrite. 
God can understand that you are a hypocrite. Because your heart and your face don't concur. What is in your heart is different. What is in your face, what is in your look, what is in your word, they are different. You are a hypocrite. Want the hypocrite, Jesus said. What is the wisdom from above? There will be no hypocrisy. There will be no deception. That's the wisdom from above. I just read the last verse and conclude. Verse 18. Verse 18. And the fruit of the righteousness is sown in peace of them that makes peace. What is, it's a very difficult word to interpret, just a Explain, try to understand the fruit of righteousness. What is the fruit of righteousness? This wisdom from above. That's the fruit of righteousness. Because you have got a right standing with God, you don't want to be a hypocrite. You don't want to be a quarrelsome. You don't want to be unclean, dirty, crooked. You want to be candid. That's the fruit of righteousness. We all want to be. Nobody wants to be crooked. Nobody wants to be troublemaker. We all want to be gentle. So the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace, in a very sh shalom situation. The efforts you are taking, it is sown in peace of them that make peace. Those who want to have peace, those who want to make peace, those who want to have a peaceable situation, they want to have a very shallow, very happy family. They want to have a happy family, a sweet home. Those who make peace, they are willing to suffer to bring peace. They are willing to accept injustice. They are willing to accept even a punishment. They want only peace. The family must be peace, the church must be peace, in my work situation there should be peace. Whatever the injustice I accept, even I humble myself below justice, peace is very important. Those who make peace, they sow the seed in peace for to have the fruit of the righteousness, to have purity, to have joy, to have this, uh, that spiritual situation, the heaven and the earth, those who want to make peace, they sow this fruit of righteousness in the soil of peace. Peace must be everywhere. Peace must be around me. Those who endeavor to have that peace, they are wise people, that's the wisdom from above. May the Lord give all of us the wisdom from above. The wisdom from above is good behavior, good works, showing good behavior and good works with humility, gentleness and meekness. If there is a bitter jealousy and because of that bitter zeal there is an argument, strife, content, contention, don't brag about it. Don't lie that you are a wise person. You are not a wise person. That's a lie to think that you are a wise person. That wisdom is not from above. That wisdom is from bottom or that's from hell. That's sensual and that is devilish. And because of that wisdom, where there is a bitter contention, a bitter zeal and contention, there will be confusion and every type of evil work. But wisdom from above, but seven pillars, one is it's always straight, candid, pure. Number two, it is peacemaking. Number three, it is gentle. Number four, easy to be entreated. Number five, it is full of empathy and good works because of that empathy. Number six, it will have uh, no partiality. Partiality means giving everybody their equal share. Giving, that's the wisdom. Giving everybody what they need. And it is with no hypocrisy. If your face and your heart don't concur, you are a hypocrite. 
you are a hypocrite. Don't brag about you, don't think that you are a very wise person. Yes, you are very wise, that wisdom is demonic, devilish, that wisdom is from hell, that wisdom is not from heaven. If you are a hypocrite, that wisdom is not from heaven. Jesus said, woe unto the hypocrites, woe unto the hypocrites. In English there is an expression that comes to my mind, wear your heart on your sleeves. Wear your heart on your sleeves. Others must be able to see your heart. Wear your heart on your sleeves. Don't hide your heart. Wear your heart on your sleeves. If you are wise in other ways, don't brag about. It is a lie, you are not wise. That wisdom is from the bottom, from the from sensuality, from the devil. If you want fruit of righteousness, seed that uh, sow that seed in peace when you want to make peace. Surely the Lord has spoken to you. It will prepare us to enter the new year with wisdom from above. With wisdom from above. Shall we pray?